Hi, welcome to Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm your host, Robert Green, and joining me today is Kevin Bost. Hey, Kevin, how are you doing? Hey, Robert, doing great. Great to be here. Thanks. Thanks for coming back on the show. For people that may not have seen your previous episode, it was like a year and a half ago or something, uh, give a little one. overview of who you are. Yeah, so my name is Kevin Bost. I'm a Microsoft MVP. I also do a lot of live coding on Twitch, and you can find recordings out on my YouTube as well, uh, kebo.dev, if anybody wants to find all of my links and follow along. Excellent. So today we're going to take a look at the improved search in Visual Studio 2026, which is just around the corner, yeah. coming out soon. Uh, Very excited. Release is available so people can download it and play with it today. And obviously search is something that we all do all the time. So if they can get better and there are improvements, that is really good news. Yes, absolutely. I think we've, especially with all of the agentic tools, being able to read and find your way through the code is becoming more and more critical. So anything that we can do to try to speed up that process is amazing. Right. All right. Let's see something. Perfect. Okay. So I've got a, a small web application here. Details of it are not really overly important for what we're going to show, but it does have an Aspire host. There's an ASP.NET Core app. There's a little data project and some unit tests and that kind of thing. So. Mm -hmm. One of the things I'll dive into first to kind of show off, uh, sure, fine, um, is I've got a function here that's just going to give me back a string. What I have here functionally is just a, a get my text method. And this function here uh, is going to return a lot of text. Um, I think I just generated a huge amount of uh, lore, some text here, but we'll get to the breakpoint. And then most of us are familiar with hovering, being able to kind of get this little preview. But when we actually get the new text visualizer, one of the coolest things in here is you can actually now go control F. Because I don't know about you, Robert, but the number of times I get a large amount of JSON or, or blobs of text, and I find myself immediately copied out of here into some other text editor just to be able to do a find on this is absolutely amazing. So yeah, same quick find that you'd have in the text editor windows. It's just been now brought into the text visualizer, which makes it, uh, that much better to be able to go through and do. Cool. In this project here, I have this uh, widget class and there's a widget controller and you know does all the cruddy type things like one would expect with a web application. But you'll note here when I do this, it's actually grabbing into this .g.cs. So just based upon the um, some libraries and frameworks that I've got pulled in, this gets automatically generated and there's quite a bit of stuff that goes in with all of this automatic generation that I generally don't want to, to look at and deal with. So if we go up to our tools and then down to options, um, and then we search for search because recursive, we can come in here and we can find this search exclusions that we now have access to, which is absolutely amazing of being able to dial this down and just say, hey, I don't actually want to be searching my generated files. Those are not things that I actually care about. So I can go here and I can go star.g.cs to just say, you know what? Generated files, I'm not interested in. And obviously we're, we're kind of familiar with the usual ones. We don't usually care about our bin and OBJ directories. That's not really a thing that we care about doing. But now if we come back here and do something like our, we'll back it up, widget. We'll notice now we're no longer getting the controller. We're now just getting down into the actual uh, data model and data class that I have here. So rather than being able to search it, and just for proof in the pudding, because we've got about eight possible ways to search. Did you search for something and did it show up? So I did search for widget, but I am no longer getting my widget controller. So over here on the left, if I expand this out, You'll note underneath this generated folder here that I have, I've actually got widget controller.g.cs. Okay. And so this guy, now if I just do my, my, my code search here for widget, I'm no longer finding widget controller anymore. I'm just now finding data model itself. And it's all because of this option in here where we can now exclude out particular files from our search results because you get back all this generated stuff. Uh, you can end up with TypeScript models and various things, all kind of depending on what frameworks and libraries you're working with. 
There's all this kind of extra stuff that goes along. Now they're still all here, right? So if I do .g.cs over in my solution filter, I can still filter down and find the files here because this is just searching the, the file tree or the solution view of the same file tree here. And so it's not actually blocking out those search results that I might have, but it does give me something added in here to be able to just say, you know what, let's, let's pull this back and actually get ourselves down into that, that searching that we want to do. Right. Which I think I is, th this has been one of my main complaints ever since source generators was added to .NET is we got all of this extra stuff and I don't want to look at it. <laughs> I want to find my code. I, I want to look at the interesting things. And so finally being able to kind of dial this back and being able to control it, I think goes a, a long way to being able to do this. The last thing is having these settings in here that you can edit as JSON um, just up at the top. Um, very much feels kind of like that VS Code edit my settings type situation that we have. Mm -hmm. um, and so having that up there to be able to uh, pull that in uh, just makes it all feel a little bit nicer and a little bit easier to edit. Yeah. So I think for me, those are some of the, the really big features that I've been looking forward to and really been excited about with the VS 2026. The other one that I, I think kind of goes to a backseat a little bit is just the speed of the search. and the Show us, yeah, show us the edit user settings, Jason. I want to see that. Yeah. So if I click here, so it drops into this and then another great place where you can then end up going and doing your control F if you need to be able to find it. But it gives you a much cleaner way of, again, it feels very VS Code-like, at least in its inspiration of how this ends up getting organized. And you can see a lot of the settings that I have. Because when you do install the Insiders build, it gives you the option of importing your settings from 2022, which is great, right? right? You yeah. don't have to feel like you're losing a lot of your configuration and whatnot, um, except for then I, I do always drag my Solution Explorer to the left because that's where it goes. I think that's <laughs> my minor pet peeve is it goes on the left. Oh, that's what that's why I have window layouts, right? Exactly, exactly. I, I was very hoping that that would migrate with my user settings. It doesn't. You do have to go through. And Actually, that's but, not a bad idea. Is that that should be a setting? It. It should. And I think I actually saw, uh, I think it was actually on this channel. I think Leslie was doing something on window layouts in VS 26, where she was talking about that same sort of thing of how the window layouts are a little different than the user settings in some cases, mm -hmm. especially in how they sync back and forth. But for me, it's usually pretty easy The the solution explorer and, and all of its related tabs just immediately get thrown to the left because yeah. that's that's where I prefer to have them live. If you put that on developer community and let me know, I'll go vote. It. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah, like I said, those are kind of at least in the, the, the sense of what I've been really excited about. And the performance of the UI in 2026 is, is just faster. It feels smoother. Um, it makes it that much easier to get in. Just even being able to, so control Q is the, the hot key there for immediately jumping into the, the, the feature, the code search. Yeah. Um, there's one other nice little thing down here is this guy now actually also has a docking window option, tiny little icon up in the corner, but you can now just pop this guy out because I know for me, sometimes I get that search window open and then it's really easy to click off, hit the escape key, do one of those types of things. And right. it's like, I just hold still for a second. I just need you to sit there while I go and uh, like, I need to click on this tab because, you know, I forgot the name of the member that I want to search for and oh, yeah. I just need to look at it. So having that ability to just kind of pop it in and then also um, switch right back to the pop-up back and forth kind of easily, depending on whether you want it with that kind of light dismiss type look or something that's actually a little bit more permanent. It just makes it feel very integrated and smooth of being able to go through and do, and then not having my UI lock up when I'm searching is even better. That's awesome. Cool. Well, thanks for, for showing us this stuff. All excellent stuff, all available in the Insiders release of Visual Studio 2026. There will be a link in the show notes. If you haven't already downloaded it, download it. The download's fast. The install's fast. And the app is fast. start playing around with this new stuff. Cool. Thanks so much, Kevin. No, thank you, Robert. I appreciate it. As always, happy coding, everyone. 
Hope you guys enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time on Visual Studio Toolbox. Thank <music> you.